We are speaking a lot of water scarcity, scarcity or the possibility of water scarcity. So this is a figure that I'm sure many of you know already, but gives a good idea of the the mouse. Okay, but you see uh, here the scarcity areas, water scarcity areas in the world. So these areas painted in, uh, in orange in the middle there. Uh, and, uh, and the yellow are those areas which have really a physical scarcity of water, so there is less water than it's needed for these regions to, 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 to use. And uh, then you have a different type of scarcity, which is areas painted in red, where uh, there is enough water, there will be enough water for uh, the, the needs, the demand, but uh, there are not uh, sufficient uh, financial or uh, economic uh, means to make the development of water for this purpose. So we call, can call it economic scarcity. And uh, the, uh, the other areas, uh, uh, blue, are, are areas which have little or no water scarcity these days. So if we look at the per capita total amount of annual renewable water resources by countries and uh, now you see that also this red and yellow area coincide more or less with the previous ones in the, in the previous map, but here is the per capita value. Uh, so there is still the, the, the population distribution does not change things still very much as it will do much more in, in the future, if not in, in not so many years from now. Uh, the, the, these two curves represent the evolution in the last century of the population, which is the blue curve, uh, which has uh, increased about four times, and then the red uh, one is GDP, which has increased much more, has increased about 20 times in the same period. And these curves are important because we speak often of the dangers or of the difficulties coming from increasing population, but it's really the increase in the economic, uh, in the, in the, um, the well-being or the, the economic capacity of, of people or regions or countries that will create uh, uh, our main problems. Right and back on this. So here is the same thing, but this is this. The population change. So is the change between 2010 and 2050, uh, and you see the change was uh, much more important in these blue areas and the uh, middle, and then less important in the green areas. So the, we see that in general we have much smaller change in the north, if I could say, than, than in the south. But that's known already. It's nothing new. But we have the same thing here for GDP. And here you see that the change uh, in GDP is much smaller uh, in, in the north than, than in the south. Uh, so in a way here the world is turned upside down and uh, is this uh, conjugation of these two factors that uh, basically create, uh, create our problems. Uh, one factor that will be very important is urbanization, as you know. The, we have crossed the last year, in March or something like this, the number <coughs> point where the number of uh, uh, people, uh, urban people uh, equals the, the number of people in rural areas. And uh, the number of people in urban areas is growing very much. So these two curves above uh, correspond to the developing countries, and these two here. And uh, this being the rural and this being the urban, you see that uh, the urban increases tremendously quickly with the uh, creation of a lot of problems in urban areas. Those two curves here are for the developed countries where things are much more stable. Uh, but uh, we have here the, the rural population, which really is practically more stable, and the urban one is growing just a, just a little bit. As you know, the whole population of the world will increase from now 
to the middle of the century uh, about 2.5 billion, and this 2.5 thousand, uh, 2.5 billion or uh, milliard, of course, it's always a fusion in Portuguese, we say thousands of millions. <laughs> this is still a same thing. And then a billion is a million of millions, and that's thousands of it like in. Anyway, uh, so these 2.5 uh, billion will all be increasing the uh, urban population from, from now to 2050. They're not the same people, but the increase will be in urban population. So this will transform immensely in a matter of a couple of generations the, the landscape uh, as regards the role of urban versus rural. This has tremendous implication in water. The, 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 the strategy for developing water in urban centers has to be completely changed and reviewed. And uh, it's one point that uh, we have to, to look, particularly in the areas of the world where uh, this phenomenon is, uh, is being very, very much present. Here is the, the, the distribution of the water involved by regions. Uh, as you know, the first column on the left shows uh, an average for the world, and we have uh, an agricultural uh, consumption of around 70%, and uh, then 20% for industry and 10% for municipal or, or domestic uh, purposes. Uh, but these uh, values can change very much from region to region. So here on the left, we have developing countries, and you see part for agriculture was approximately 80% or more, 85% in some, in some of these areas. And here, as we became to OECD countries, the United States, and so it's coming to the 40% or about 30%. This is very important because the, the, the relevance of agriculture in water is very much to do with, with the, the water consumption and the, the the, 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 these problems will be very more, very much present. Uh, the impact of, of uh, life on, on water consumption is larger, relatively speaking, in these uh, less developed areas or in the, in the current emerging countries and others that will become soon emerging emerging countries. Uh, so, just two slides. Boy, very important, which has already been referred to climate change, which is very important. This is of one of my previous IPCC studies, but those in the current uh, last report are very similar to this replacement. So basically, you see there the, the, these uh, central areas where there is a tendency for reduction of uh, precipitation, uh, a very strong. Uh, area around the Mediterranean, which encompasses uh, the north of Africa, but also in the middle of the meridional, meridional Europe, and uh, other regions, and uh, here in these areas, there is an increase. So as you know, climate change influences precipitation. There is an overall in the world increase in precipitation because it activates the hydrological cycle. But it's the distribution that changes a lot. So some regions become, uh, uh, have a, a strong increase, and then they have a strong uh, decrease. And unfortunately, it's in the less developed areas of the world that these effects are more, are more uh, important. Not only this, but also associated to climate change is an increase in extreme phenomenon. So droughts uh, uh, tend to be bigger and floods would have to be bigger. So the areas which are now affected by droughts, we then have more droughts, unfortunately, and uh, the others not. So that's, uh, uh, this will affect clearly, clearly the, the, the what's going on with the water. And another one which shows the, the discharges, that's really what matters for water use more than precipitation. Uh, but again, the trend is not very different. This area here is suffering more. So you see, south of Europe, and all these uh, these um, regions very much uh, uh, 
attacked by a violent phenomenon, and uh, the South Bank of the Mediterranean having more serious demographic uh, problems. Uh, this would be more difficult in the North part where the population is practically stable or decreasing in, in, in some countries for the future. But um, uh, so climate change depends on what it will be. But, uh, as you know, the target was to have an increase of two degrees by the end of the century. This would be bearable. But if it is four or six degrees, which is the maximum scenarios of IPCC, then uh, this will may have dramatic consequences. Uh, that, so it would be good that there will be a, an agreement in the next uh, end of the year, in December, in the, 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 the summit on uh, climate change in Paris, to, because the problem is very much, very much related to how difficult this with water. Okay, here you have uh, some curves that show uh, uh, the evolution of a certain number of variables for the last 150 years, like population, GDP, number of dams, number of telephones, number of vehicles here, here down. And uh, what is interesting here is that all the curves have more or less the same shape. So this is this kind of exponential growth, growth particularly here after the middle of the graphic. So after the, the, the development of, of the Industrial Revolution, and particularly even more after the end of the World War II. So all this looks very much. The, the consequence is that the, 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 simultaneously we had over the environment consequences of the same type. So if you look at the next thing, where you have the CO2 concentration and the uh, methane concentration, ozone depletion, and so on, in fire production, expect species extinction, whatever, all related by our, the curve is also the same. It means that we are really making a, an exponential pressure, growing pressure over the environment. So it's clear from here that this has to finish. It's something that cannot continue like this because the, the, Sources are limited, some are renewable, but are uh, renewable in, in, uh, in limited proportions. And this has made, uh, has made uh, some people to create a concept in which they tend uh, to, to consider a new geological epoch called the Anthropocene. Uh, a really geological epoch, epoch where the man would have uh, the role of a uh, major geophysical instrument like natural uh, disasters, like volcanoes or earthquakes or so, to be man who have a navigate influence in the planet and its forces. So that's the reason for Anthropocene. So this would be the last 200 years of the Anthropocene, could be detached as a new Georgia here. And this is not uh, just talking, it's is an official procedure going on in the International Geophysical Union to approve, to tend to approve this um, Of course, this takes a lot of time, there's a lot of reviews and different commissions and so, and was, um, was uh, introduced by uh, a Dutch uh, chemist, Paul Krutzen, who died fortunately recently. I had the pleasure of uh, working with him directly in Brussels when the period where I was in Brussels. And he was really the leader, but there are others that are following with this Anthropocene. And this Anthropocene will create great influence in the atmosphere, in the, the biosphere, in the lithosphere, and also in the hydrosphere. So it is in water at, at all. So it will uh, be very much affected. It was a meeting made last year in the bond is the project they had the global water system global water systems project. There's a book called Water Anthropocene, which asked me to write the, the prologue to this book. Clearly they discussed several practical cases of consideration of this. Uh, okay, uh, so it's more or less 
Well, what I said that concluding this period after the 50s, after the end of the war, is called by some people the greatest elevation because the, the, the world has evolved much more quickly than before uh, uh, in all these respects. So we have some figures population in, increased twice, the recovery 15 times, the body consumption increased 15 times, also the number of vehicles, and so on, uh, increase of greenhouse gases, uh, etc. So uh, this uh, period of great. And uh, I have a few slides on the CPU and the Dorbosine. I already mentioned the main characteristics of this, but it's a little bit detailed in the different uh, effects which are characterized this Dorbosine. Uh, and uh, those related to water. So the atmosphere and the Anthropocene, so dealing with not only with the, the changes in high, the average values of the water supply and the water demand that would then augment due to augment of temperature, and, but also in extreme phenomena like uh, floods and droughts. And uh, so we came here to the second line from the bottom, the limits imposed by exponential growth in the finite uh, domain. There are two names, Baltus and Kubokom. Baltus was uh, a great failure because he made a prediction that in 200 years, uh, uh, water will be not here for the world. But uh, really, he has uh, not estimated the, the tremendous technological development. Uh, but uh, the, what was predicted by the Club of Rome is really much more close to what is happening. Some of these curves that they published 20 years ago, very similar to what is happening. And it's remarkable because they, they have done all this work without computers in, in this time. And, uh, but, uh, so it's, it's a matter of concern, not a matter of being despair, but a matter of concern that must be considered by the people to looking at problems of water at the local and regional level, but having in the background of the world situation because it will affect them in one way or the other. Uh, I didn't mention yet the influence of the so-called virtual water. Virtual water is the water which is incorporated in products that we consume. And uh, as uh, order of magnitude is much uh, higher than the, the direct consume. So for instance, I don't know what is the per capita consumption of water in Morocco, but uh, must be... 750... How much is it? 750 per capita per capita? No, uh, 700 cubic meter per annum per capita. 700... 50 cubic meter per annum per capita. Uh, per day, you don't know. Uh, per day, where we, we are, uh, depends on urban 150. Yeah, but in every maybe around perhaps 100 million yeah. or something yeah. like this, mm -hmm. you have a large consumption in agriculture. So yeah, it's, uh, 82 percent. Anyway, the, this is well, uh, here and in Europe is already more than 150. In the United States, it's compared to about 500 liters per day. The minimum external is acceptable for basic needs given by the United Nations is 40 or 50 liters per day. But compared to this, the amount of water that each one of you, each one of us, spend per day in virtual water, that is in indirect consumption of water, particularly in water which is incorporated in, in food, the products, is uh, 50 orders of magnitude higher. It's something like 3,000 3, liters per day. So. The problem is there. The problem is not in the water that we consume directly, but is in the water that we consume in the products that are uh, the, that we are uh, using. And with the, the development of the world population, first, but uh, GDP mainly, this will tend to spend much more to acquire much more products and to spend much more water. And uh, emerging countries, particularly. This is true that they will tend to approach the levels of spending of water uh, in the OECD or in the industrialized uh, part of, of the world. And uh, so, uh, 
looking then at these exponential patterns, we see that it's not possible to continue to do business as usual as we use uh, now as regards to water. So we have to modify completely our behavior to make possible living with the limited amount of review of water that we have every year. Even if we admit that we can transport water from one point of the world to another point of the world, which is not uh, easy. But the most effective area is really to uh, water which is incorporated in products. We see here uh, a figure from Oxford in the Netherlands that uh, uh, is water uh, attached to products that is transferred from one point of the world to the other distant point of the world. So in this way, actually, what is really a global a global uh, or uh, other matter becomes a global uh, matter what well, a governance has to be global as, as we already say here and um, how to do this is a different story but if it is not done we will have problems and um, <coughs> so this is a little bit like climate change where we have causes in one part of the world and the consequences in another part of the world and uh, as determined that some countries are already using this possible of uh, water to do what is called grab water, uh, particularly with the foreign and the Chinese, which have in the south part of the country, uh, very wet regions in the north part of the country, quite dry regions, and they have been making uh, enormous infrastructures to transport water from the south to the north. They realize that it is much easier to produce food elsewhere in the world where there is sufficient water, and so they are buying or renting land and water, and then transporting the, the food products to the, uh, instead of producing them. Of course, there is a combination of both things, but, uh, but with this, they can get a balance of their uh, water resources in uh, the equation. Okay, so uh, this uh, could, could title of this corresponds correspond to an expression which was invented in 2011 in, uh, by the German and the German in November 2011, the symposium on the, the nexus of the food and, uh, uh, and the energy. Uh, only because they are the three main, uh, three main important sectors that react and interreact and are interrelated. Uh, uh, Water consumption is related to food production, is related to, to energy, what is in energy. If we, if we produce uh, more energy from water, then uh, we don't produce for other things. The biofuels enter in this equation. But uh, of course, uh, also the other dimensions of water interfere in this, and they have to be considered simultaneously. Uh, so for the environment which is not there, but climate change and biodiversity is very important. Uh, for instance, uh, tourism, uh, tourism, educational aspects related to water, even culture, even cultural aspects and uh, philosophic, philosophical or religious factors to do with this uh, religion is, is becoming uh, is, uh, important because uh, it constrains the use of water. In the other way, they want to adapt so a little bit to the new, new situations and to see a little bit what uh, is being uh, done. I mean, and, uh, in, in which way the traditional and the, 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 the expression of the second uh, uh, texts uh, of the religion have to be adapted or have to be interpreted. <laughs> to be interpreted, I would say. But this is not only the case with Muslim religion. For instance, if you read the uh, writings, many recent from Pope Francis and Catholic religion, they express many of these problems that we are discussing around this table. But it is still, you even say that he is preparing for the first time an encyclical for this year, uh, which deals with environmental problems. So that it's not possible to, to keep the same inequity of uh, distribution in the world that we have been uh, having and, and, and putting this as a, a matter of uh, a religious matter that is being considered. Okay, so that's the piece of the book that uh, we have created. Uh, uh, this appears here because 
<coughs> of this book was the kind of preparation of this book was a result of this concern. So the foundation in Portugal comes to make a translation. That some of you may know that uh, asked me to form a group and to coordinate uh, this group, and uh, we really had uh, was lucky to have excellent experts in board that have accepted to grow uh, <coughs> group. People in the United States, or the United States of America, some names that we know, like Bill Cosgrove or Peter Gleick, uh, or uh, Peter Lauchs, for instance, in, in South America, and Ben Braga, which is the current uh, chairman of the, of the council. In Africa, and, uh, and then in China and uh, India, Australia. So they're all in the world. We're back a few years ago and working together. And it was a very pleasant uh, for me. It was a very good thing for the pleasure and the honor of having made it such a good group of, uh, of uh, experts and also being co authored in the same way. The book is uh, as a co authorship. Everybody has been responsible for everything, even there was a there was some distribution of work according to the backgrounds of each member, but everything was read by everybody and the British government, so it was an interesting exercise. And we worked with it as already, uh, as you know, can we say that uh, there are serious problems, but we have to find ways to do only we need we, if we but uh, if I go around the conclusion, we say that what you need is a strong uh, leadership, a, a stewardship, uh, individual uh, responsibility, and commitment to action. Uh, how to put this in, in, in play together, in the same, everybody will be in the same direction, is another matter that we have to see. But the, the when it comes to what has been said already about governance and not going to exist. Again, is the definition of the global partnership and the, the levels. So what we're doing now is about global uh, global level of water governance, how to, how to do it and when. But what I was referring is that there is an ongoing effort that all of you know the definition of the sustainable development goals that should be approved this year. There was a meeting in Zaragoza in January uh, this year where I think which was the last opportunity to discuss this uh, from a technical and scientific <coughs> academic point of view. Now we're aiming on in the political finally polishing of the of the but it's interesting that uh, this, this replaces the Millennium Development Goals that are finished also this year, so this is post-2015 period, and uh, we have seven goals in the Millennium Development Goals, now we have 17 goals, <coughs> and we have about 170 targets. And water, which appears there with number six, and, uh, so this is summarized. <coughs> The different things in the different uh, in the different uh, goals uh, by one or two key words, but the definition is longer. Place. But it's interesting that what is practically to do with uh, all the other uh, aspects, uh, uh, which shows the the, the, the very important uh, character of water for this development. You see here the water system. There is a mistake there, should not be target, should be goal, SDG 6. Uh, it's a goal, water is a goal. And the complete target is ensure availability and sustainable of water and sanitation for all. Then the, those are the targets. So in the previous, in the land development goals, it was water sanitation, water and sanitation, basically. Now here we have already other things like uh, water use efficiency, like the integrated water resources management at all levels, and uh, water quality and things like this. So it uh, encompasses more water as a resource 
then on his uh, his uh, service uh, this you know, the supply and sanitation. And uh, but in the other SDGs, in the other goals, there are many references to water that are closely linked to the. For instance, we have here global water six, and you have there from the education, the, uh, from the health, combating waterborne diseases and reducing that illness, so it's also water health. Now here we have uh, things related to consumption and production uh, aspects here in these two on the right. And you have uh, things here related to um, ecosystems. Uh, so there are many points of contact, uh, water being, as I see, point one, which is, has more arrows in the direction of the others than any. And the other one. So, coming from this governance and separating the sectors, lives, and actions, in some of the graphics which have been presented here already, there's these words. So, the sectors of importance are domestic, agriculture, industry, energy, environment, health, etc. Then, what are the drivers? Population, GDP, climate variability, climate change, desertification, urbanization, globalization. And then the actions uh, to, 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 to develop uh, awareness, monitoring, science and technology model, modeling, uh, integrated management, infrastructures. This conducting to the water sec security, like uh, in the first uh, the slides that uh, Professor Matai Kelly has shown, was water security in the center. But I think that what should be in the center is not water security, it should be, sorry. Be, should be people security because really water security is a transition for people security or even people well-being. Uh, so I, this is difficult to construct a simple uh, graphic of this as I put it in this, in this way. Okay, so uh, number of matters have been uh, touched here. I think I'm all about uh, almost finished. Let me put two final slides. Uh, uh, this is the view of the earth from the first, uh, remember the first astronauts, which you would say, uh, from the space, what uh, the land is blue, the earth is blue. And uh, this, from this case, is called the blue planet, and things like that. As a matter of fact, this can give a wrong idea of the amount of water that exists in the, in the world. Because if you really try to put this water together, if you have a straw and you suck all the, the, the water from the globe, uh, what you get is this. And the whole water is put there uh, in this small bowl there on the left side which is a sphere with uh, 2,500 two, two kilometers diameter, including salt and fresh water. Because if it is only the, the fresh water, the, including the, the water, and so is this one here. And this one is 170 kilometers diameter, so 170 kilometers is almost the distance from a little bit more than this is from the airport or so. This bubble has to provide for the needs. So that apart from the, <coughs> the, the different problems we spoke here, the amount is really limited. Because here you probably cannot see it because the lights are in the room and there is still a much more finer thing, which is the water in rivers and lakes, which is a sphere with 15 kilometers diameter. When I saw this first time, I thought it was unbelievable. I could not, so I went to calculate the volume of the sphere, the volumes of water, and it was right. So, uh, uh, if you have not seen this before, I think that to agree with this, we have to be very careful, very gentle to this small sort of drop. Thank you very much. Thank you.